Right, computer junk. Every two or three years I'll do a computer video. I've got enough parts coming for the motorcycles to finish two and get one other one well on the way. So there's probably about 16 items coming in the post, but they're not here yet. Um, the COVID things obviously slowed the post down, all this sort of stuff. These two machines are from a kid called Judd. He is uh, the guy who took my little pit bike and the condition of him taking that according to his parents because he got rid of some old computer stuff so he offered it to me for free i gave him 20 bucks and said i'll give you another 30 bucks if you give me your bank details because i need 20 bucks with me so 50 bucks for judd and that will pay for most of the brakes uh on the pit bike i love this sort of thing i've probably got 15 of these um <laughs> hidden in cupboards and all sorts of stuff now what he's done i'll have a quick i'll just move you up quickly I don't know off the top of my head the condition these came in. They've got optical drives, they've got a floppy. Um, this one has a Ethernet card, no video cards, no memory, no processors. This one's been in the weather, has rust on the back of it, I'll show you that in a moment. So this is a TX Pro. So VXs and TXs will take the dual voltage processors, your Pentium MMXs and K62s with 3D now instruction set and all this sort of other stuff. That's got two SDRAM slots and four 72 pin memory slots. So your EDO RAM will work in there. What's it got? Four ISAs, four PCIs, and it'll have USB, I would think, USB support on it as well. The doggy's making a mess. Um, around the back, it's been left out in the weather, but it doesn't matter, we'll see if it goes. Uh, so this one here, same deal. We've got a floppy, we've got a optical drive it's got the old style floppy ribbon so that can be piggybacked on over five and a quarter there was a hard disk sitting in the bottom of this a 320 gig one no idea of the condition of it is that it quantum no that's not it it's sort of marked up so i know for a fact whoever put that there it's a western digital caviar um whoever put that there would have um had a bit of trouble installing it because these this is an FX chipset. This is a really early one. It has obviously your four ISAs, your four PCIs. Being an FX, it's single voltage CPU, so your classic Pentium 1, um, K5, I think, AMD, I'm not really sure. Um, someone's, it's got, I would say that's 256K of cache with external slots available if you wanted to bring it up to 512. I'm not sure. I need to have a look at it. But anyway, look, I've got a couple of things. I've looked at the jumpers on this. There's a few things to note. Um, it was set up for a Pentium 120, and Pentium 120s and 150s, I'm told, are just 133s and 166s that weren't stable running a 66 megahertz front side bus, but they were turned down to 60, where they therefore uh, ran stably and were offered at a slightly cheaper price um, to what the 133 and 166 was. Now, uh, 2032 battery. Ivy, will you knock it off? She's chewing a bottle. Uh, Flutter's attack, they're no good. I've bought a new one, or a couple of new ones for both of these machines. On the off chance I do successfully get them running. We don't know yet, we have no idea. So we get our old cell. Whoops, I'm kicking the thing. Check the voltage we've got. 1.2 volts. And on this one we have 3.2. Actually, polarity's wrong, but you can see 3.2, so that's cool. So we can chuck that in. To, hang on, which way do these go? It goes upside down, doesn't it? Oh, man. And that will um, allow the BIOS to retain its settings. I had this in the shed. It's a Pentium 133. I've checked the jumpers. We're at two times 66 megahertz, so that should work. So it's a, just a zip socket, zero insertion force. And there's memory problems, because there isn't any. So we'll just stick a couple of sticks of, I think this is eight meg EDO. We'll put the top one in first. Let it lie down, make sure it's seated. The second one, should be using an anti-static strap, but 
given that this is a 20 buck computer we're not going to bother and bring them up to vertical I also have a it's probably a 4 meg card I would think 1, 2, 3, 4 it's old, it's PCI I've only got one of these um, I was looking for another one I've only got AGP ones and so what that means is they won't work in this because this was pre-AGP and I'll need a drive so from now we're going to power it up, see what happens alright let's see what happens eh? is it? right okay we're not, it doesn't blow now let's see if we get any joy out of this so what we're looking for, oh good, 4 meg, yep pause Pentium 133, we've got that. Continue. Delete to enter setup. Let's go into the setup and have a look. Right. Uh, what do we got? We've got no hard disk in there. Drive A is set up for a five and a quarter. We don't want that. Um, 144. That is save and exit again. I can't remember. Escape, quit. Save and exit setup is F10. Um, F10. There we go. And we'll just see if this thing boots. Can you see that floppy? Yes, you can. I just want to see if it makes that funny da -na -na noise. And that way we should be able to see. So we've got 32 meg, penny 133, so it's good. It's an award BIOS, which is my favourite. The other one's an Amy BIOS, I noticed that, so I don't know what it's going to be like. So F4 to skip. All these sorts of things. And I'll just skip it. I was looking for a hard disk. Why don't we give it a hard disk? Hang on a second. Let's just turn it off for a minute. I've got one sort of perched up here ready. That's a 1.2 gig quantum be a fireball, wouldn't it? Yeah, fireball. I've had this stuff for years and it's all been sitting in a box or boxes in the garage in the old cupboard of Rosie's. So it's a pink cupboard painted like a horse barn door and it's all full of all this old junk. Let's try that. Yeah, that's going. I can hear that. And I also want to try one of these other things. I just want to see if this does anything first. Um, drive A, three and a half inch, so that's saved. That'll be a CMOS battery. If the CMOS battery is flat, that'll just default. Actually, while I'm at it, I just want to see here what the boot sequence is. Boot sequence is A and C. Uh, let's just see what happens. I've got a boot disk somewhere too. See what happens, eh? <laughs> see if we can get a DOS prompt and have a look around in the in the hard disk. See if there's anything on there. Is it going to select? What's going on? Oh, pause. I want to have a look here. Cache memory, okay. Cache memory, none. Right, that's a problem because all those chips have been taken out. Those ones there, so I've got to find chips for it. We've got extended memory, base memory, that's all good, but the cache memory, there's none, so that'd be slugs a wet week. Um, EDA RAM, okay, there's one of them that's odd or faulty. It's only one showing up as being extended data out. And the floppy is starting MS DOS. Cool. Alright. So, what are my DOS commands? I can't remember. The hard disk is not coming up. Alright, so that's a pain in the ass. What's going on with the hard drive? It's working though. Exit setup F3. Set up this. Yeah. Uh, F3. That should give me an A prompt. Uh, what have we got? Okay, so C drive's not there. What's going on with C drive? Just a minute. Let's turn it off. And it could be the way it's set up on the jumpers. Or, alternatively, what happens if we just pull it out of there and piggyback it off, the, off this one? Let's try. Ping one's against the power connector. Uh, 
that's just a messy pain in the ass. We'll take that plug there and we'll stick that in the disc. And then we'll plug the fan into the accessible one. Come on, get in there, you son of a gun. Right, so there's no cache memory. I didn't know that. Well, I sort of picked it, but I thought that might be it there. Anyway, we'll try again. All right, we're going back to the DOS prompt. We've got the um, hard drive in there. That's all cool. The floppy's in there. I don't like the cache bit, but what do you do? Um, and we'll go back into this DOS thing. I'm not going to install it. I just want to have a sniff around in the hard drive. I don't know where I got this from. Um, I'm going to exit. And go back to a DOS prompt. And we're going to go C drive, which is C. And have a look and see what's in there. So there's nothing in there. Um, if I go back to A. And then go F disk. And F disk is a partitioning Thing and I can just say create a DOS partition, so that's number one. Uh, create a primary partition, number one. So it's a quantum, yep, the full thing in there. Primary DOS partition already exists. But anyway, what if we go sys C and put the system on there? I can't remember how to do it. There should have been probably a space there, but I'm just make, gonna make C the system so that at least then um, I haven't done this in 20 years, that's why I've forgotten. So that means it'll boot into this into C drive when we restart. So if I reset that now, pull the disk out, or just leave it sort of hanging out. And there's a few other things we can try too. There's another floppy drive that came in another machine that um, Judd had. And I want to see if it works. It's a Panasonic 3.5 floppy. Uh, there's the board out of it, which is a Pentium 4 Celeron type board. That's a socket 478. I haven't got a thing for that. Alright, so we should just boot straight into drive C now. But it's not. Okay. Um, and then we're sticking. What is going on now? It's not booting in there. I probably do have to format it. Let's try something different. Let's turn it off again. Try one of these. It's a SD card. It takes the place of an old hard disk. So we take that out and we'll put this in. And which one is this going? It goes in there. And we just plug that guy in there. And that should do something. Let's try that. So we've got card detected and power, but we haven't seen any active, so we're watching for that middle lead. We're going to go back into the BIOS. Oh, it has two, look. Wow. That's a ton. Let's see if I can go to read it. It's coming up as an 8 gig. So that's the maximum this BIOS will read, and that's fine. But um, that's well impressive, isn't it? So let's see what we can do with it. The cache memory worries me. I don't like that. But we can buy some of that, I'm sure. I just don't know what sort of chip it is. This is a DOS 6.22 um, installation disk. I'm not going to install DOS because I can't be bothered. I'm just going to go for a prompt, which is there. Um, if I go C drive, it's not coming up. So we'll go F disk which is the partitioning um, DOS program. Create a partition, create a primary, no space to create a DOS partition. Well, here we go. Partition one, non-DOS. Total disk is eight gig. Enter the number of the partition you want to make active. Partition number one. All right, partition one made active. Escape to continue, create a primary drive. No space, what the hell? Set active. Oh, he's already set active. What the hell? Display partition information. Let me have a look at that. Okay. So I've had to reboot this. I don't really know what I'm doing with this. I've never played with one of those. It seemed to have a partition on it. 
um, but it wasn't active and I couldn't set it active so I had to delete the non-DOS partition and then that green light came on so I know it's communicating with that but I don't this is all fairly new to me um, last time I was into computers and messing around with them I hadn't got anything like that before there are a few whiz bang little things you can get instead of a floppy disk drive you can use one of these guys here which means you can just have all your games on a USB and just troll through them with these buttons and get what you need out of that and anyway, I'm, I'm just going through here and back into F-Disk again, or I'm into the DOS thing again. And I'm just going to escape out of there. And F-Disk. <clears throat> and it should have come up with some information that I want to see. So, create. So I've got a 2 gig primary DOS partition, which is now drive C. So what I can do is create a DOS partition. I want to create an extended partition for the rest of it, um, which is 6 gig. Um, there's really 16 in here, but the BIOS can't fathom anything over 8 gig, yeah? Um, so that's the extended one. Mm. No logical... Yep, that's cool. So D drive is now all done. Then we've got E drive. <laughs> And then we've got a crap ton of... <laughs> well, let's have a look and see what the information is for the for the partitions. But extended DOS is 6 gig, and then there'll be another one on top of that. Um, and then you've got all these other bits down here. So that's cool. There's stacks of room on this thing. Um, Alright, so we're going to escape there. We'll reboot, and then we'll format drive number C, because we'll need to. And we'll see where that, that takes us. But it's looking pretty good so far. It looks actually a lot more reliable than that hard disk, which I thought worked, but maybe it doesn't. These things are very, very susceptible to damage, movement, that sort of thing now as they get old. The read head's probably buggered, the sectors are probably bad. I think I bought that because I didn't put those two things there. But whatever the case, I don't remember buying it. It's a long, long time ago. But it would have been for an old machine. Let's go format C. And that light should come on, the green one. Proceed with format. Yes. Can you see? I hope you can see. Oh, I don't know if you can see or not. All right. That's lit up. That's cool. It's formatting very quickly. And then, hope, whoops, hopefully what we can do is put the system onto drive C, and then we can display. I'm not going to bother doing all the other ones. Um, yes. So that's cool. So if I'm going to go C... I'm into drive C, have a look around, nothing in there, which is sweet. I'm going to go back to drive A, I'm going to go put the system onto drive C. And that'll transfer the boot system onto the memory card. Listen to those birds. What I do for a shotgun. No, an air rifle. I'm in suburbia. Shotgun, you get caught. Okay, so system's transferred. So now I'm going to reset. I'm going to pull the floppy and see if it boots into that. That would be really good if it did. I'm a bit worried about 75 megahertz going out of this guy. Better check the jumpers again, but it did say 133 before, so it should be alright. There we go, 133. What the hell? Um, what we can also do... Actually, what I might do... Just a minute, let's see if it boots up first. Going into drive C. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. So I'm having trouble booting into this... SD card, so I'm going to just try something. Um, if this MBR, because what that'll do is it'll put a master boot record on the disk and then it should be bootable. Anyway, we'll try that. Oh, did the kettle boil rise? I don't know, did it? Can you have a look? <laughs> Can you can you put actually I'll come in. That's all good. Sure. Should I put shorts on? What for the tea? Yeah. I don't know if you like tea that much. <laughs> Starting MS DOS. Okay. So what month is it? It is the ninth. Okay, so we are now in Drive C. So if I go directory, it's got command com. So 
let's reboot it and it should work and that means that that little guy there has taken the spot of the hard disk which is wonderful it's cool as a cucumber there's no heat in it activity lights working we're getting power and of course the card has been detected so that's cool the bias is picking it up the only issue i'd have with this machine now is the um yeah what do you call it the thing oh the cache memory is not there but i can fix that one's working really well um as i said maybe some cache memory is going to help we've got two identical ram things there one showing up as edio and one's not so it's obviously one's corrupted and that's going to cause issues every now and then um just a set of screws to hold things like the video card in that sort of stuff in the case and it's a good one so i think we'll pull up the other one have a look at that it's sort of untidier and there's rust at the back of the case and this sort of stuff it does use it doesn't use dim it uses sdram and i do have one piece of sdram that i found in a box it is 64 meg i think if it's in the box it probably doesn't work so i'm going to put that in right so let's have a look at this board this one i haven't got any faith that it's going to work um the face value it looks all right doesn't seem to be corroded anywhere the case is but the board seems okay we, again we should be using anti-static um, gloves and that sort of stuff but for now i don't think it matters too much now i do have another spare board and this one here the first thing i'm going to do actually is check the voltage on the battery i'm not expecting it to have anything in it but we'll just pop him out anyway And check the voltage. I don't care if this is flat. I'm not going to put a new one in. Yeah, that's got nothing in it. 0.16 volts. So that's knackered. That doesn't matter so much because I'm not going to put a new battery in until I know the board actually works. Um, I've set the jumpers up at 3 times 66 bus for a Pentium 233, which will only give it 200 megahertz. But 233 Pentiums, as I said before, I reckon they're pretty crap. There's no difference. Um, between, I've never detected too much of a difference between a 166 and a 200 and a 233 and of course then you get to Pentium 2, 266s and they're infinitely quicker um, so that means I've got this one here, this board and that's a much healthier looking board it's much, um, we've got the three ices and three PCIs um, quite unusual to have white ices, they're normally black and of course we've got the chip there where's the little knife? And that's our 233, which will run at 200. I think it's, yes, that's 233. This is odd in that it's only got the 72 pin memory, not the SRAM, which is what this one runs with. Um, but we've set that up, so it should come up as a 200 megahertz if it's going to work. So we can just look at that there. Work. Sorry about that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, and the reason I took it out is I couldn't get the SRAM in, in the case, without flexing all over the shop. So we will stick it in now and it doesn't want to go okay there's something very very odd with this let me have a closer look just a moment got it in it was a very unpleasant squeeze so we will stick a video card in is that the video card yes it is and run it what the hell that's an AGP. What am I doing? Where's the other video card? Did I leave it in the other machine? Nope, that's not it. I've lost the other video card. Oh, there it is. Alright. Let's pop that in. Everything's so freaking. Why are these slots so tight? What's going on with this? That's really tight. I don't like it. We'll get a power supply and we'll plug it in. We've got all this connected up. One thing with AT is to make sure all your earths are together. So at the end of this, two plugs there. What's the dog barking at, Charlie? And the earths will go to the inside. This is going to do two things. It'll test the board and it'll also test the power supply. Okay. The power supply didn't blow up. Let's see if anything shows up on the screen. Nothing is showing up on the screen. That doesn't surprise me. try to let's try again hey that SDRAM could be dodgy so we can just get a stick of the other one and stick it in see what happens 
but I'm not seeing anything there and it's kind of what I expected the board could well be dead so we'll try the 72 pin stuff um, this is the last two bits of this I've got I haven't got much stuff actually I've got a lot of the crap um, sort of Duron sort of Athlon stuff I don't got much of this old stuff right let's give that a whirl go back to the monitor turn it on and I want to see a green light come up at the bottom not seeing diddly squat and it is working right well I would say that's right just a moment right so we'll try our other ATX board AT board I should say plug him in want to see a green light on the monitor and then we've got oh yeah we've got green um all right pause and that one works t33 megahertz mmx 32 meg of ram floppy disk fail cmos battery fail we know all that we don't care right let's put that in the case and see what happens so we're going to tart this up with a rattle can um it's not imperative but i kind of like it to look a bit better than it does in saying that though a rattle can is not really the answer um i'm going to do a proper restoration on the other one the desktop one i think it's a really nice looking machine and I think it'll look good if it's um, sort of restored properly. These cases were around a lot in the late 90s, or sort of 97, 98. I bought a bunch of these. I'm just trying to work out how to get the drive thing. I might have to get the drive out first. And the, they were sort of right at the very end of the frequency light. Some of them said high and low. Some of them had numbers. Reset button stuck. We've got to look at that. Um, but ultimately, they're actually quite a nice little case, although they're very cheaply made. But I'm just going to pull these out. Now, the other one, the desktop, is a really nice looking machine, and we can do good things with it. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. And it is um, ridiculous what I'm about to do, but I'm a ridiculous person, particularly when I'm to restore cars and bikes, which is what I mainly do. I haven't played with computers in ages. That looks sort of kind of manky. It's been outside for a while. So I'll continue to pull this apart and I'll come back. 20 years ago I used to go around fixing people's computers and oh, so I pulled it all out. Um, tools and these went in here before. There's all sorts of um, Pokemon. God, that must have been when the kids were little. Oh, cable ties. The Dulux paint <laughs> formulas when I worked with Bunnings. Hardware house, sorry. Probably shouldn't have that. There's all sorts of adapters, and hardware, and the cable ties, and little I.O. things. I've got a whole box of those I.O. things. I don't know what I've done with it. But this is what I'm interested in, because I've got all the right screws. But I'm short on those ones. That's what the case is all sort of put together with. Hmm. It's just pretty well trash. <laughs> this is the start of the, um, the mini towers that... A lot of the XTs, ATs, 286, 306, 486, all desktop sort of cases. And the mini towers became very popular because you can sort of sit them under the bench. Um, this is the first of the, well, sort of the early ones where they're really easy to cut this up on them. A lot of the earlier ones are much heavier in construction and a lot safer, really. They're just heavier. So I've just basically scraped off rust with Scotch Rite and Rattle Candid. Um, I'm not going to any great lengths with this thing. I just want it to be a little bit more presentable than what it was. And I'll just bang it together. A lot of the hardware that came out of it though was all rusty. Some of the things are all right. But if they're all rusty, you know, I can't really be bothered with them. I've only got three of them. You can buy pads and stick them there. Judd also had that butt ugly thing there, which had the um, another board in it and a few other peripherals. I just stripped an axe that was missing one of the side covers, but that has feet on it, which I hope will fit this. And they're pretty easy to remove. We just get a little screwdriver and push the center out and the whole foot comes out in hand. Like that, so we can use them because we've got four of them. They're slightly bigger than the old ones, I think. But they won't matter, we've got them. At least I think they'll fit. Are they gonna fit? They fit? <laughs> Look at that. 
Alright, so you can literally get anything out of these things. It's sort of they're good fun. So that will just fit in and then it locks in. So we'll put the board on I think now. I'm not overly wrapped with this because we've only got two stands. Um, now, what we used to do at Box Hill, we used to study this computer food service stuff. You can use the plastic stands, you can dock them off where there's no corresponding hole underneath because they normally just fit in and slide down. We used to put the, um, the fibre washer underneath and the way you would do that is you put matches in there. A couple of matchsticks, put the fibre washer on, drop the board on and then the screw goes against the soldered joint. Oh, um, this is the solid area. Um, I don't think this is going to do it any harm. That's why I don't like them, because they don't give you a lot of... Um, it's not so well supported, so I imagine there'd be some element of damage done if you go pressing modules of RAM in, particularly dim modules, on something which is flexing. I don't like that at all. I'm just going to pop that in there. I think that's it. And then that should slide down. No, there's one more in here, is there? No, I think that's it. So let me take a shtick here. See that? It's all unsupported there. That's not great. That's why I put the memory in before mounting the board, which I will finish off right now, because I can. All right, we'll drop him in. Can go like that, does it? Yeah, I think it does. And stick some screws in. Have I got any non-rusty, horrible ones? Yes, I've got one here. And then we start plugging him up. We've got, normally you would have a DB9 and a DB25 for serial. Um, I'm going to use this, that's a printer port, that's the, one of the communications ports. The other one is there, so I'm just going to stick that in the top of the case there and just put a blank there. And that should sort that out. So, the trick is with these, they're just terribly difficult to make look pleasant inside. It's kind of messy. Kind of got to turn the cable and bend it. That's the printer. Where's pin one of the printer? It's there. It's getting dark, so we're not dark, but it's um not as light as it was. I'll just turn it up like that. Oh, that's loose. And put the path plane. Not just fit up in there, which is easy. Okay, okay, one of the problems this little bloke has is the reset button whoop, is stuck right in. There's nothing wrong with that, but this reset button is screwed. Um, and the machine will never work with it like that. So I've got to try and figure out how to get that out. I wonder if it just pushes. I've got a spare one. Oh, yeah, someone just mashed it right in. Sweet. Fix, fix, fix. A very quick fix. I'm just going to get a sponge and wipe that out. It's a little bit dirty, but it's, oh, it's not too bad. Beautiful. Wiped. That's cool. See if I've got the wires right for those little switches and things, but it doesn't matter. We'll just slide this rather spiffy looking Panasonic floppy in. Get it nice and level and screw it off. Right, well, the 350 cylinders are back. So I don't know how I'm going to be doing this computer stuff for, but anyway, we're going to find a spot. Which is the master and which is the slave? Hang on a minute. Oh, which is IDE1 and which is IDE2? One is down the bottom, and we've got that one goes in there. Right, so that's the hard disk, which isn't a hard disk, it's this newfound angled thing. <laughs> which I'm just going to have to mount or tie down the bottom. I might put on a bit of sponge or something and just loop some cable ties around it. Um, and of course, we've also got the optical drive, which I don't think it's going to work. It's a 1997 one. Can't imagine it's going to do any good, but it, you never know. You never know. So I like to put the CD-ROM and the hard disk on separate channels. You can slave and, you know, piggyback them off each other, but we're not going to bother. I can just go up there. It's a mess at the moment. We will tidy it up. We can do used cable ties for that. I've just got to figure 
how I'm going to mount this because it looks like poof. Maybe I can squash that down like that and stick it under there. That wouldn't be too bad, would it? I don't need to get to it. I'm just going to load stuff onto it. I'm not going to take it out again. So we don't need to have it on the back or anything like that. Um, you can use... And one thing I've always liked doing is using two cable ties for idea cables because we don't want to crink, really don't want to crinkle them. Data lines are set apart by different cables. So what that means is they don't get crosstalk. And if you bunch them up, well, it's unlikely, but you don't want to put them in the wrist where they could. Um, and corrupt data and all that sort of stuff. So I'm probably not doing this thing any good skating around the edge of the case, but it was 15 bucks. That's like a good bottle of wine. It's not even a good bottle of wine, it's just a bottle of wine. It was dowdy. It was like two bucks. Yeah, where are we going? I don't even know where I put my side cutter. All right, so this needs some juice. Uh, there's some juice right there. So that will go into there, and then that will go under there somehow. I think that's probably the most sound spot to put it. We've also got to use this cable here for the fan. Right, let's just give this thing a kick in the guts and see if we can get some stuff happening. Yes. Yeah, we always make sure it's earthed. Cool. And now we can plug him in. Alright, it's nice and tight at the back, sort of. Um, it's not tight inside though, but mm, we don't really care. So, <coughs> now what we're saying, we need juice. We need a keyboard. I don't think we need anything else apart from that. Oh, a video cable. Did I put a video cable? Yes, I did. Um, looks like this is working reasonably well. Continue. This is just Windows 95. It's a proper version. Um, this thing, I've read, the reason I've gone back to this old board, um, I had one of the jumpers set wrong and I couldn't get anything out of it. And I tried everything. I tried different video card, I tried moving the video card in different slots. I tried, she was, I checked over the core voltage of the CPU, all that sort of stuff. Used different RAM in different slots. Had all the peripherals unplugged, so it was just the board, then even tried a power supply and I couldn't get it to work or get it to boot past that thing. So I just thought, you know what, I've got the cylinders and everything here for the CB350. I want to get back onto that. And so um, I might as well sort of get this done and get it out the way. The other thing is, hang on, we always load a custom. It just brings back memories doing this stuff. It's actually quite nice. Okay, I've just got to use the number. Um, this is an old CD-ROM. It's November 1997. They, or 1996, sorry. They normally fail. This is missing the door from the front. But otherwise it works quite well. So we're nearly done. Um, one thing I'd like is a frequency readout thing for here. You see them advertised every now and then for about $15 in another country and that's $1,000 for postage, which is ridiculous. You can use one of these. This is off eBay. They're about $3. Um, it's a temperature readout. And so you can... And so you can sort of run your node down to your processor or inside the case somewhere and monitor temperature. It'll give you something to look at. Um, it does have buttons. You can hack that sort of stuff um, by putting your reset in a little button at the back or something and using these two. Um, on, what have we got? We're not in Tijuana. We're in... I haven't even got a wheel in this mouse. It's so antiquated. Camera Melbourne, Sydney. And it's all good. So what I'll do, I'm surprised that drive works. I'll put that drive in. I'll try and find another door for it. I might have one, I'm not sure. IDE, um, CD-ROMs, they're not that reliable now because they're very old, but that one seems to be working really, really well. So that can go back in. And the video card didn't fit properly, so I'm just gonna modify that um, mount, if you like. Elongate it a bit so it fits in properly. Yeah, we will restart it. But it's really, really good. I'm very happy with it. I always grab this stuff because it's sort of, um, it's there and I can make something run out of it. This hasn't been cleaned up, it's not going to be used for a while. I can't imagine what I'm going to do with it, but I've got plenty of these sorts of things. But the fact is we've got something that was out in the rain and looked pretty trashed. Right, so we've resurrected this, learned a bit about it. Um, that's all working fine. And... Even just using Windows 95 again, I haven't used this for years. 
Actually, that's probably crap. I probably used it the other year when I did another computer, but who knows. Uh, this one here is finished. It's a little bit battle scarred. Hang on a second. You can just turn it off. It's got a few little marks and stuff, but that doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter at all. It is what it is. And that is just a really cheap computer, um, which costs nothing except bits to make. This is the same. I've taken video card memory out of this and stuck it in the other one. I did buy some more memory, or I've ordered it, and a video card, an S3 video card, and then that machine will run. Um, and I'll also use that solid state, um, this drive in there as well. I think that's the machine it ran on. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. But whatever the case, that is quite a nice box. Now with this one, you can do something a little bit different because it's an older case and it's a bit more rigid. These ones here, if you use automatic grade paint on that, it'll crack because these things tend to open up when you take them off the bottom rail, they sort of spread out and you'll get cracking along there where the case for this one is um, much more sturdy. Um, this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. This sounds crazy, but this is actually a really creamy color that would look good on a retro um, computer. It's very easy to apply, it's just acrylic paint. And I painted this car, I think, six years ago, and it still looks beautiful. So you could use a finish like this to get a kind of piano finish on a retro PC to sort of pretty it up a bit, I suppose. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Enjoy your classic PC, and I'll see you soon. Sorry about this power supply, because it looks like hell, because it's obviously been out in the weather, but I'm just pushing it a bit further. It's absolutely mint inside. So that's just pure cosmetics. There's nothing wrong with that. Or at least I don't think there is. I don't need to use it at the moment, but I think, you know, that'll do as a spare. Just clean it up and <laughs> whatever. What do you reckon? She haven't. <laughs> <Jesus. laughs>